Flor, a third year student of Bachelor of Science and Technology Communication Management of Mindanao University of Science and Technology. Today, I'll be reporting about the gender like styles theory of Deborah Francis Tannen. And before I start my discussion, I'll be asking you what's the difference between sex and gender? And in order to know that, let's watch this. Let's go to the question again. Question Do you know what's the difference between sex and gender? We have to differentiate first the difference between the gender and sex for for the better understanding in this theory. Since most of the people think think sex and gender are just synonymous. Sex and gender a very important distinction. Although they are often used synonymously, sex and gender are not the same. And it's a point worth making at the onset of the discussion of the gender theories. Sex is an objective fact, objective fact based on biological criteria. While gender is a social, symbolic creation learned through cultural training. Sex is about the hardware and the gender is the software. Gender leg is an apt title for Tannen's position, though the point becomes distorted because of the distinctions are drawn between males and females, biological-based terms, which it would be more appropriate to label the two camps by their gender-based base titles, which are the masculine and feminine. So... So much for that. My theory is the gender lag styles theory of Deborah Tannen. The presenter is Melvina de Villaflor. Who is Deborah? So let us get to know her. Theorist Deborah Frances Tannen. She was born on June 7, 1945. She is an American academic and a professor of linguistics at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Her research specialty is conversational style. So let's go to the question again. Question. Do you know what's the difference between sex and gender? We have to differentiate first the difference between the gender and sex for, for the better understanding in this theory. Since most of the people think, think sex and gender are just synonymous. Sex and gender a very important distinction. Although they are often used synonymously, sex and gender are not the same, and it's a point worth making at the onset of the discussion of the gender theories. Sex is an objective fact, objective fact based on biological criteria, while gender is a social, symbolic creation learned through cultural training. Sex is about the hardware and the gender is the software. Gender leg is an apt title for Tannen's position, though the point becomes distorted because of the distinctions are drawn between males and females, biological-based terms, which it would be more appropriate to label the two camps by their gender, based base titles which are the masculine and feminine so so much for that my theory is the gender lag styles theory of deborah tannen the presenter is melvina de villaflor who is deborah so 
So let us get to know her. Theorist Deborah Frances Tannen. She was born on June 7, 1945. She is an American academic and a professor of linguistics at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Her research specialty is conversational style. When we say conversational style, it is speaking that's comparatively calmer, slower, and less intense, but maintains good eye contact and gestures. And her first book on conversational style, she was offers a micro microanalysis of sex of six friends talking together during a two and a half hour Thanksgiving dinner. So let's go to the to the education of Deborah. She graduated from Hunter College High School and completed her undergraduate studies at Harper College with a BA in English Literature. Tan went on to earn a Master's in English Literature at Wayne State University. And later, she continued her academic studies at UC Berkeley, earning an MA and a PhD in Linguistics. So, what is the th this theory is all about? So let's go the the definition. It comes from the word gender plus dialect, meaning a conversational style used by a particular gender. So what is the theory? Theor theory all about. It is a gender styles of discourse are best viewed as a two distinct cultural dialects rather than as an inferior or superior ways of speaking. Deborah Tannen coined the term genderlect to describe the way that the conversation of men and women are not right and wrong, superior and inferior. They are just different. A useful way of viewing this that she uses is that they are different. They are, they are as different cultures. Thus, a Japanese and a French person conversing, conversing would take account of each other different cultural styles. So, also men and women understand and take account of very real differences of, each of the other. So, in, when we say gender lack, the male and female conversation is cross-cultural communication, communicating. Meaning of cross-cultural communication is a field of study that looks that looks at how people from different culture background communicate in similar and in different ways among themselves and how they endeavor to communicate across cultures in a cross cultural communication this is how they look like When men and women in a, is in a, are in a cross communicating, miscommunication occurs. Miscommunication be between men and women is all the more insidious because the parties usually don't realize that they are in a cross cultural encounter. Tannen believes that both men and women need to learn how to speak in order in, in speak in the other's voice. So, what do the two genders seek for? Women's desire for connection versus desires, desires for status. Women seek human connection, connection, while men concerned mainly with status, competition, and accomplishment. 
The fundamental difference that drives match other behavior is that women have a deep drive to seek connection while men have a deep drive to seek status. Of course, they are they eh, there are other goals that men and women seek. Nevertheless, these are significant source of difference of difference rather. Tanin agrees that may, eh, many men and women would like to have intimacy and independence in every situation they could, but she doesn't it's she doesn't believe that it's possible. Women's desire for connection versus desires for status. Oh. Men are tend to be emotional and then men are rational. So that's why um, women tend to talk a lot rather than rather than to talk about competition, status, or achievement. Oh, as what I have said, so who talks more, men or women? Two, two styles of talk. First, the rapport talk. Second, the report talk. So what are the dif uh, who among them belongs to rapport talk and report talk? Women value rapport talk. In seeking connection, hmm, women will talk more about feelings, relationship, and people to create a rapport and connection. So, before I go to a report talk, what is the meaning of rapport talk? Rapport means a close and harmonious relationship in which the, the people or group understand each other's feelings or ideas and communicate well. While men, so the men, value report talk. When we say, when we say report talk, when we say report talk, So men are impersonal and efficient information. It is a uh, impersonal and efficient information exchange. When we say report talk, this a typical monolog monologic styles of the men, which seek to command attention, convey information, and win argument. Hmm. In seeking status, men will tend avoid emotion. As a sign, eh, men will tend avoid emotion as a sign of weaknesses, unless they are using in that in a in an a way that does not expose them to attack. They prefer facts and taking objective pos objective positions, and will tend to tell others, taking an author authoritative or ex expert stance that put them above others and discourage interruption. So the theory proposes that women use communication in order to connect with others and men use communication in order to achieve status. Because of these different functions of communication, the communication styles of two of the two groups vary. So one of the reason men's speak in class more than women is that many of them find that public classroom public classroom setting more conducive to speaking whereas most women are more comfortable speaking in private to a small group of people they know well second uh, the second reason is that men are more likely to be comfortable with the 
debate-like form. Debate-like form that discussion may take. Yet another reason is the difference is the different attitude towards speaking in a class that type by women and men. So, what are the types of talks under the rapper talk versus report talk? First is the public speaking versus private speaking. Second is telling a story. Third, listening. Fourth, asking questions. Five, conflict. So let's go first to the public speaking versus private speaking. Women talk more in private conversation, while men strive for one-up positioning and avoid small talk or self-disclosure. So as, as what I have said, men are more likely to talk in public and... Uh, usually um, usually they are men are bragging talking about always talking about jokes and then women love to talk about uh, anything that that connects us from others so the second one is telling a story oh males are bragging is what I have said then females, they are l lowering themselves next to each other. Example, uh, I'm so fat, and then someone, someone would respond, "Oh no, you're you're so skinny." And then, no, uh, the next is, we'll say, "No, you're skinny, and I'm fat." Have you noticed that, that when you say, uh. Uh, I'm so I'm so dull. Then someone would disagree disagrees it, and then sh she or uh, she would say that. Now I if you are if you are dull, how how much more her? How much more her? So the third one, the listening listening, who listens most? So women hold eye contact. Offers head nod, nods, or yeah, uh, and other responses to show they are actively listening. They interrupt to, uh, to offer support. Someone uh, are more likely see you lo uh, see you l uh, I forget what they what they called it. So, men's overt style is to say I agree with you to avoid a once down stance. So the fourth one, asking question. So who asks more, women or men? So women ask question to establish a connection or a tag question to end of a sentence. Asking question. So men don't ask for help. For them, asking question are form of verbal sp sparring. Um, public face is far more important to them. Women will listen just to create empathy, as well as to find hooks by which to connect better to other person. They will listen carefully and attentively for a long period without interrupting. Well, while they do, while they do interrupt, is it to show support or to ask questions to better understand the other person? And while men, on the other hand, use interruption as a power play by which they can grab attention and demonstrate status. In a male-dominated business meeting, when the boss interrupts, others will immediately allow this to happen. Men will avoid asking questions as this, as de as this exposes their limitation and hand back control to the other person. Men's conversation will thus tend to jump around different topics as they compete to each as they compete to take the lead while women will allow a conversation to go on for a long time in order to achieve 
greater relationship that that so the fifth one conflict oh by the way uh, a way of talking about people will avoiding emotional embroilment is to, is to either tell detached stories or or to uh, or to use humor that rivalizes uh, and or separates men does tend to use jokes more and use stories particularly in a third person objective styles when they put themselves in their stories they are they are the heroes and intellectuals solving complex problems leading the charge and saving the day in jokes they can put others down and hence raise their own status in women's stories they are more often the victims they will tell about how they how they and others have been emotionally hurt this creates more empathetic connection with the with the audience so the fifth one conflict women treat conflict and uh, women tend to to look at conflict as a threat while men since life is a contest they are more comfortable with conflict so that's the end of my report and these are my references from the books book online online and others so the gender textiles theory is a theory that claims that men and women represent different culture so therefore they communicate differently the theory can also be a sexiest because of putting an idea of how men and women would interact in a society and uh, homosexual males may also be uh, expressive and attentive in communicating among friends but this does not mean that they are now a female because of the characteristics and that's what gender relax is all about. Um, by the way, uh, once again, I am Melodina Villafnor. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe. Thank you.